Hey guys, and welcome back. I've got an awesome video for you. I hope it creates a couple light bulbs going off about those of you that are struggling with casting it, losing tons of yards. Let's go ahead and talk about here at first, what is the cast? It cast is two different motions. Number one, it is your hand has two different ones. It can go up, so my wrist can move up. That's what's called radial deviation. As I cast, I'm releasing that radial deviation. That's just like casting a fishing pole. That's probably where the name came from. I'm doing the same thing with my right wrist. I'm really letting that thing fly. That's the first piece of casting. And then the second piece of casting is actually doing this with my right wrist. I'm pushing for my right wrist from the top. I'm flexing these muscles on the inside of my forearm, and I'm trying to create speed by pushing the club forward early in the downswing. So if I do that right from the top, man, I'm, I'm gonna be throwing it. I'm burning up all my energy back here. And worse than that, this club becomes incredibly unstable. Let's go ahead and try one out. I'm gonna do my best to cast. It's a little bit difficult for me to do because I've really tried to ingrain some lag, but we'll, we'll give it my best shot here. I mean, I, <laughs> I try to do my best. It's almost impossible for me to hit the ball. I, I barely kind of shank that one, just barely off the tee box here. My club head speed was 82 miles an hour, and I felt like I was swinging hard, but I had no idea where this club face was. And the reason for that is when I have good lag, my club head is just gonna trail behind my hands. My hands are going forward, that club's trailing right behind. As my hands come to impact, the hands are leading the way, and that club's just gonna whip on through there. You can't help but control the club face because it's just falling right behind the hands. As soon as I start to cast and that club wants to get in front of my hands, it becomes incredibly unstable. Imagine you have a pull cart. You're sitting on the hood of your car going down the interstate and you're trying to hold that pull cart with the club, golf clubs in it in front of your car. Not gonna happen, it's gonna slam back into you. But if that pull cart, if I'm sitting on my trunk, pulling that car behind my car, that cart behind my car, it's gonna track right along with me. Same thing with a golf club. If that club head gets in front of my hands, it's gonna become incredibly unstable. If it lags behind my hands, okay, now it's very, very stable, I can make it happen. So you're probably thinking, okay, I get it, Clay. I know exactly what you're saying. I know I wanna stop casting, but how do I actually do that? And it's actually a couple moves that most people don't talk about. So the first one is, when we're casting, we're having that ulnar deviation or that casting motion where my wrist goes down happen at the top of the swing. So what I want you to do is I want you to save that for the bottom of the swing. Now here's a trick to get that to happen. If I cast, let's walk, look just at the butt end of the club. As I start to cast, you'll notice how that butt end starts pointing toward me very, very quickly. So here's the trick. I'm gonna let you know a little secret. The longer I can keep that butt end of the club going away from my body, the easier it is to stop casting. This starts to turn toward me, you're dead in the water. This keeps away from me, it makes it so much easier. So we're gonna do 10 reps here. We're at the very beginning of the swing. I'm gonna go ahead and choke up on this club so it's easier to see. But as you start the downswing, I want you to have that club facing away from your body as long as you can. And as you continue the downswing, I wanna have it facing the ground for as long as I can. So I don't wanna do this, it's facing back up toward me. I wanna have it go away and then stay to the ground until the last second. Then when it's at the right time, I'm gonna pop this back up and let all that energy go. So when we do a proper release, I am casting that club, but I'm casting that club down here at the bottom of the swing and letting it whip on through. That's why you have to cast to get some speed. It has to happen at the bottom instead of the top. So that's the first piece. Let's go ahead and do 10 reps. Choke up on your driver, club away from me as long as you can go, facing to the ground as long as you can go, and then right here at the bottom, when your hands get over top of the golf ball, boom, pop that thing right back up you're gonna get that lag to whip on through there. So do 10 reps, nice and easy in your living room. Work on that, get familiar with that feeling. Here's the second piece. We talked about how that wrist angle back is a real killer. As soon as that wrist pushes forward, the club cast, almost nothing we can do about it. So what we're gonna do here, as we start the downswing, actually first let's go ahead and do this. I want you to do a couple things with me. Set the club up here at a 90 degree angle from your body. And if I'm looking from this camera, I want you to do this motion. I want you to turn those hands down. So if I have just my right hand, I want you to feel like you're taking this like a, a grip on a motorcycle and turning it this way away from my body. That's gonna actually allow me to twist the club that direction. Do the same thing with your left hand now. That logo is turning away from my body as I'm doing that. That's the opposite of pushing the club. 
I'm rotating it that way. So when I do this in the downswing, as I rotate that club out, I want you to have this club very flat with the ground. So if I'm casting, what's ended up happening is my club is steepening up, the butt end's pointing toward me. If I'm rotating that club out this way, I'm actually shallowing the club, I'm squaring up the face earlier, and now I don't have that urge to push with my right hand. That's gonna take away that urge. Then from there, you're gonna wait to the bottom of the swing, and then bam, you're gonna pop that grip back up to get all that speed at the bottom. So do another 10 reps, this motion, 10 reps just going like this. Now I wanna go ahead and take it to the top of my swing, and I'm gonna get that same motion as I'm starting my downswing. Club's very shallow, and my hands are turning out. Now we're ready to put that to the test. I'm gonna feel that same thing in my swing. We're gonna see that I have a bunch of lag. You'll see some slow motion video going through this. I'm gonna go ahead and absolutely rip the ball, see if we can improve on my 82 mile an hour club head speed. And let's see, 145 yard driver distance from the last one. So put those two things together. You guys are absolutely gonna crush the ball. All right guys, best of luck. That one's right down the right center. We'll see the club head speed on that one here in one second. We are at 119.8 and we went from 145 to 296 on our distance. So get that lag, work hard, see you soon. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed that video. And in this one, we really got started in that move where we talked about shallowing that club and squaring that face early. That's a big key. The pros are doing that to really compress a golf ball with everything from a driver to a wedge. That's really what allows you to hit the ball solid is getting it started down and getting into the slot. Well, I've got an awesome video for you. It's called the tennis racket drill, and it's my absolute best drill to get into the slot and start getting what we call the move in your downswing. I'm gonna play a preview of that video. Just go ahead and click the link up on your screen on the iCard or down below in the description of this video. You'll get instant access to that so you can have the move in your swing. Let's go and get started. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down, as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again, coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here, you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm going to be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm going to be rotating my hand.